hey everyone i'm excited to uh, be with you um this beautiful day and uh it is my desire to keep this as brief and straight to the point as possible uh i want to take this time to address some of the concerns raised and the questions we have asked so uh, I'm going to try to go straight. Some there are so many things going on in the Bible, in I mean, in the body of Christ, uh, that we must be really careful about. Um, we don't want to muddy the waters for young believers, um, and we don't want to set precedents for things that is going to that might make people trip in their faith. The life of God called, that we call the Christian life is very simple we must keep it simple the keys method you know like they say keep it simple stupid this is what how jesus uh presented the gospel of the kingdom it was so simple that even the people some of his listeners tripped on it because it was too simple you mean we just believe we mean we just do this and that's all uh but god is not interested so much in what we can earn all right, he he provided for us. Our position is to receive it by faith and apply it and live it. <clears throat> so I want to um, start by answering how many times should one chant the name of Jesus? All right, it, when you are praying. Okay, you do not need to chant the name of Jesus three times, seven times. Uh, or repeatedly for it to work. Even a whisper of the name of Jesus is up in absolute faith is enough. All right. Uh, let me say something. What about somebody who is mute, who can, couldn't talk? Can he still pray in the name of Jesus? Yes, he can. But you may not be able to say it out because it's not so much the words of the mouth that matter. It is what the heart says. So we to incorporate our traditional beliefs and cultural practices into the word of God. Rather, it is the word of God that we should bring into our cultural practices and beliefs. All right. So that, um, so that our beliefs can be transformed by the word of God. All right. So the name of Jesus is effective whether you whisper it or whether you say it in your heart or say it out loud, and once is enough, okay? It, it's not like a matchbox that you have to, you know, grasp, you know? You got to strike it one, oops, it's, it's not working. Strike it one, it, no, it's not. No. The name is potent anywhere, anytime, and if it is called by, you know, in absolute faith, and for good reason. Remember that you must keep your prayer in line with the word of God. We are, there are all kinds of prayers. And uh, each prayer has its rule. There's a prayer of faith. There's a prayer of intercession. There's a prayer of, of thanksgiving. There's a prayer of confession of the word of God. There's a, there are so many kinds of prayers. Prayer of commitment. So know what kind of prayer you are praying. And then apply the word. Now, let me say something here too, that in the book of Psalm, uh, if you can look into it together, the book of Psalm, chapter 138, verse 2. If you can look at it with me. Remember, I used to say, and I still say, I'm used to telling you, and I still say it, I said, don't rush to pray. Rather, rush to study the word and understand the word. The word that you understand and apply could make your prayer shorter but more effective. Look at what uh, verse 2 of Psalm 138 says, King James Version. It says, I will worship, this is David, this was David, David uh, speaking here. I will worship toward your holy temple, thy holy temple, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Uh, that, that's profound. 
it is the word of God that makes the, 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 the word of, it is the character of God that makes the name of God what it is to us. His infallible character, his superior character, his, his, his excellent character. He has integrity. He's a, he's a person whose name, whose life and character is honorable, is reliable, is dependable. That is why his name works. If you call the name of somebody else, it's not going to carry the same weight. But don't run to use the name. Try to know the person. And imbibe that character into yourself because we are called share the nature of God. All right? So I'm going to keep my answers short, please. If there are other questions uh, that these responses may have triggered, please feel free to call and we can discuss them or reach out to us in some way. By the way, if you don't have our email address, our email email address is info at newworldministries.net. Okay? Some of these uh, chanting of the name of Jesus three times, seven times, they are these are things that we, we got from different parts of the world, especially the majority world, the, the global south, and uh, other parts of the world. You know, so we have to be careful that we're not bringing our African cultures. Our African culture is beautiful. I'm an African. I'm a very proud one, a very proud African. But uh, some of our African practices and cultural beliefs, uh, we sometimes bring them unknowingly, unwittingly into the, this, uh, the to this spiritual thing. Uh, it, nothing wrong in it. God speaks. God is that uh, he enjoys all our cultures. Indian cultures are also, you know, brought in and so many other, you know, cultures are brought in. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that it's not about the culture. It's about bringing our practices and our beliefs and then inculcating them into the worship of God that in a way that is contrary and misleading. That is what is uh, I'm, I'm speaking against. All right. So if you worship your idol or your people worship their idols and they chant the name of their idols 18 times, 17 times, three times, seven times, and you think that if you're going to get the name of Jesus, the power to be discharged, you got to do it seven times, three times, two, it's not going to work. The, a whisper is enough. If it's faith in your heart with the word of God that you have carried in your heart that makes this name work. If you disobey the word, the name won't work for you. All right? If you do not give regard to the word, the name won't work for you, unfortunately. So this is why I always say, please, get the word, get the word. Don't rush to pray. When you have the understanding, you will know how to pray and your prayer will be very effective. Okay, we're going to move to uh, number two. Number two is tattooing the name of Jesus uh, on your body. Um, and I want to say that Tattooing the name of Jesus on your body doesn't make you holier. And in fact, the scripture says, even from the Old Testament, that we should not put marks on our own body. We should not do like mark the body. The Bible says in the, in the New Testament, Paul was saying, he said, we have been redeemed. Our bodies are God's. We're redeemed with a price. He said, therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. So before you put a mark, I know many people, if they don't want to listen to common sense, as the scripture puts it, they will say, well, I felt led. Uh, God is not going to lead you. Don't fool yourself. God is not going to lead you against his word. All right. <clears throat> so don't, you don't, don't, if you haven't done it, don't do it. If you have done it, don't worry about it. Ask God to, for forgiveness and move on. All right. I have great friends. Uh, ministers that have tattooed their bodies uh, and I have some that are also even some of my church members have tattoos on their body with their earrings and all kinds of things I, I'm not here to judge in as much as the physical things don't really matter much but remember that your body has been redeemed you know a price was paid for your body so present it uh, wholly unto the Lord all right so don't go get a tattoo if you have not got one and if you have got one, uh, before you realize this, ask God to forgive you and uh, you, you are fine and forgive yourself to move on. All right. 
Number three, sleeping with the Bible. Sleeping with the Bible under your pillow does not drive away demons. No, it doesn't. So don't waste your time doing that. It, it is a sleeping with the Bible under your pillow does not drive away demons. I'm repeating. It is the word of God that you study and believe and apply that keeps evil spirits at bay. So you got to get the word from the pages of the paper of the book into your spirit. That is what empowers, gives you the power and it, it brings the presence of God, uh, makes it manifest in your life. Okay. Instead of keeping the Bible under your pillow, uh, keeping your phone under your pillow, I would say keep your Bible under your pillow because it doesn't have radiation. There's no side effect. You can reach it at any time, turn on your lights, and even if it's a verse you want to remind yourself of, it's, it's better. But keeping it for the sole purpose of uh, of keep of stopping uh, bad dreams and uh, demonic oppression is not going to work. You got to get the word, let the word come alive in your spirit and you'll be free. Every time I minister to people and if there's a bad dream, uh, in, you know, they de demons try to uh, oppress them or afflict them through bad dreams and disturb their sleep. I, When it gets to that, I have learned what has worked for me and what God has also taught me. Get the word. The word, just like uh, the word, we kill that. It, it would take care of that. Meditate on the word. Stay on the word of God. Study and study and study and study and study. And before you know it, you, the oven will be too hot for flies to come around. All right? The stove, the stove is what I'm calling an oven. The stove will be too hot for, the, for, the, for uh, flies to come around. Okay. Number uh, four is uh, wearing a crucifix on your neck. Does not make you holier. All right? I'm not saying don't wear. If you want to put it on, good. I don't wear. Okay? And the fact that I don't wear doesn't mean others shouldn't wear. But the intention, the, 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 the purpose for wearing is what matters. It doesn't make you holier. And it's not for you to show that I'm a Christian. Because it is not what we wear. That's not how we show that we are Christians or we belong to Jesus. It is our character. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. So he say so that they may see your crucifix or see your tie or see your earrings or see it, whatever else that we put on. Men dress differently, women dress, you know. We, you know, it's, it's not about the outward appearance. It is the manifestation of the nature of God in kindness, in love, in humility, in truth, and all the things that the, a Christian is supposed to exude. These are the things that um, uh, make a better announcement or shed better light for people to see. Now, I want to also uh, touch the number five, given to obtain favor. This one is very, uh, very strong in, uh, in, in, the, in may, may most of the co countries uh, around the world. Of the body of Christ, the, this is this is what you call a, a, a witchcraft. Is 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 not uh, is 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 not. I have I have in the fifteen countries that I have been to, all of these these things are there. These all these uh, points we have covered are practiced because you see every country you go to, you're going to find an Indian, find an African, find a Chinese, find a Filipino, find Different people, Caucasians, uh, Western, Northern, uh, Western Europe, Europeans, and you know Eastern Europeans. They call the, today the world. There is no country you go to that you don't find people from other, and they come with the garbage. The, the, our garbage is we travel with them, our belief systems, and our practices, our cultures. We carry them, and then we try to uh, slip them, put them into our service or worship of God. Uh, Stay with the word. Let's keep it simple. So I have heard, and the uh, people have also complained about it. People will say, oh, anybody wants a miracle here? Anybody wants special favor for this month? Anybody wants special favor for the new year? Anybody wants special favor to get a job? 
you bring a, an offering here and I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to anoint you that you don't sell the favor of God. The favor of God was given to us free of charge. And the Bible says, freely ye have received, therefore freely you must give. Okay? If there is anybody in the world who is favored, I am one of those. Amen? God has blessed me so much with favor. And sometimes I, in ministry, I'm ministering to people and the Spirit of God will, uh, 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 you know, direct me to uh, activate the favor of God in their lives or pass it on to them. I don't charge. You don't charge. I didn't pay anything to receive the favor of God in Christ Jesus. In fact, Jesus paid for it for all of us, including you. So you do not go paying, giving an offering, because this is this is impoverishing. This, you see, when ministers do that, you know that that is not a minister representing Jesus and not led of the Spirit of God. These are people trying to enrich themselves. Uh, taking advantage of uh, people who are gullible and who are ignorant. Go read your Bible. There is no gift of God that you pay for. They, I mean, in cash or do something to get. You can fast and pray. You can invest your time to study the word. You can pursue. You can invest in going to conferences and, and do, but you don't go pay. I'm going to give a special offering to get special favor. That is witchcraft. Don't, don't get involved in that. All right. You do not have to buy God's favor with special offerings, gifts, or services. If you belong to God through your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are living in the word of God, you already have the favor of God. I leave it at that. Amen. Praise God. I hope that is helpful. Now, quoting the Bible in prayer. I've heard some people say, well, even I prayed with scriptures, but I never got an answer. Uh, is it, didn't you say, didn't we, are we not teaching that we should know the word and present God's word to God when you are, yeah, we, it's, it's true. Before you pray, you have to, you must, and I'm encouraging you to please, you must know what you are standing on. Make sure you are standing on the word of God. But quoting the Bible accurately does not make one a good Christian. It is allowing the word of God to influence our daily lives that counts. Okay. Neither can God manipulate it by scriptures. We quote during prayers. God does not need a reminder. You do. Scriptures that we know weave into our daily lives and allow and, and we are allowed to influence our thoughts, our words, and our actions are the effective ones. I can't just go stagger into God's presence and then, you know, searching through my mind. Oh, where's that verse? Where's that verse? Oh, just pull it. Lord, you said, your word says. Uh, your word says, but that word has not become flesh in you. So you are not, you are just, you're just doing what uh, uh, the sons of Sceva said. Uh, this is the name of Jesus that Paul preached. You got to get the word from the pages into your life, into your spirit, and practice it. And let your human spirit be transformed by the word. And it is it's going to also affect how you pray. Sometimes you don't even need to say a word for God to answer you. Many times I go into God's presence as soon as I, when I say go into God's presence, we live in God's presence constantly. But when I tune my heart to with a desire, with a, an intent, and I want to converse with him, which is what prayer is. Many times he's, all, he's the first to speak. He will say, okay, I know these are, you know, you know, he starts to talk to me, and then I'll be quiet and listen. And sometimes I just grab my notepad and start writing as I write, so that at the end of the day, I didn't need to speak. He reads my heart. He cares about me. He knows what I need. And when he addresses the desires of my heart, he always goes deeper and wider than I could ever express myself. All right? So know the word for yourself. Don't study the word to go and use, um, you know, to pray. You know how we, there's a teaching here in North America that we say people are selling around saying, go into the court of heaven with the word of God to present. Uh, that is a, that is a, that that is a, 
the court of heaven thing? No. We have an advocate called Jesus. All right? The Bible calls him. He says he's the one who makes intercession for us. Anyway, we're going to touch court of heaven case another time. We'll look at it uh, this coming Wednesday at our Bible study. If you are interested in joining us, all right, please feel free. If you want to join us for Bible study, text us, call us, and we will respond and send you how information on how to join. Praise the Lord. Baptism. Baptism. This is number seven. Let's look at uh, baptism. All right. Baptism does not save anyone. One must be born again and live an active Christian life to be saved. Okay. One can be baptized and still go to hell. Baptism is only meaningful if one is first saved by God's grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that's that is putting it very simply and very directly. Baptism is a public declaration of your identification uh, and union with Christ in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. Okay? Baptism by immersion is the right kind of baptism. In fact, the word baptizo in Greek means to bury, to sprinkle water on my forehead, which many of us did because I came from a Methodist background. And some of my friends from Catholic and other denominations where we, we were, water, we, our foreheads were made wet. That is not burying. Bury means you are totally immersed in it. That's why they call it immersion, baptism by immersion. immersion. So uh, that is the one that I recommend based on scriptures. Okay. And the one that Jesus did. Jesus was not baptized as a child. Uh, John baptized him by dipping him into the water, into River Jordan. Uh, in the in the river Jordan, sorry, and then uh, he was raised up. Okay, so we gotta if we, we want to do it. That is the proper kind of baptism. So if you are from any other, you've had any other kind of baptism, I will I will I will leave it to you for you to go talk to God. If you need to be rebaptized, go talk to God. Okay, and follow whatever He tells you to do. Okay, sometimes we baptism is a major thing. I'm not going to call it a minor thing, but sometimes we are tripped to focus on what, so some people get, they say, I got to get baptized, get baptized, and then they get baptized, but they don't read their Bible. They're not actively pursuing God. They're not actively studying the word of God. So that baptism, I don't know how, 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 what, what it means. You've publicly declared, but you have, you are not actively living the life that you declared during, uh, you know, at your baptism. So it, it's kind of uh, uh, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Okay? There, it is possible for somebody to go to heaven without receiving baptism. Remember the story of the, uh, the, the, the thief on the cross? He wasn't baptized, but he was saved. So you can see that getting saved comes first, then baptism, when you have the opportunity to do it. Okay, we're going to move to number eight. Number eight is Holy Communion. All right. Yeah, I'm not giving you scriptures because my in intention is you take this word and go find the scriptures. And you are going to find, and if you can't find a scripture, let me know and I will find a scripture and we can walk through it together. But this will motivate, uh, hopefully, motivate you to look for scriptures for yourself to see if what I'm saying is right or wrong okay all right holy communion holy communion and confirmation uh they don't save anyone jesus uh jesus when he introduced the communion meal on the, the day before the night before he was uh caught he was arrested and uh and, and killed judas was there judas was among the group when the communion meal was inaugurated he partook of it but it did not stop him from betraying the Lord, his master, and our master. Holy communion is only a symbol of our covenant with God, all right, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's also that covenant brought us healing. So to say, uh, I, I have, I understand, I, go, I got to have the communion. I don't want to miss the communion. Uh, if, you have, if you have taken the communion, you gotta live the life that that covenant dictates. If not, 
doesn't make sense. Okay, it's not just uh, I I had the communion, so I'm holy now. No, you were holy when you came to the Lord Jesus Christ, came to God through Jesus Christ. His holiness, he 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 made you a new creation. That's what the scripture says. Okay, number nine is praying in the the <laughs> praying at, at particular hours of night or day. Okay, can I can I uh, this one is practice everywhere, 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 Africa, India. Uh, China, uh, uh, it, even in the Middle East, all right, everywhere here in North America, uh, and then in different parts of Europe. Why? Because what happens is if something works somewhere, uh, the children of God, the, the church will just buy it and repli try to replicate it. It is best to wait to. To be led of the of the spirit. I'm not saying praying is bad or praying night or day is bad. No, we can we should pray. We should be in constant communication with our heavenly Father. That is what prayer is. But praying at a certain hour of day or night or night or day is not more effective against the devil or demons. All right, that is superstition, and that is the straightforward answer: is superstition. Anyone who thinks otherwise does not understand the word of the spirit, the world of the spirits. Uh, neither does he understand how uh, they operate. Okay, Demons are not more vicious at a certain uh, hour in their oppression, or oppression uh, in our communities or against us, against us believers. You know, for people to say, okay, it's nighttime, it's 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., that particular time is when demons are more vicious so you gotta get up and pray what are you doing sleeping you, you are be, you are piling up uh, a wrong thing in the minds of people the bible says in some i think 127 he says he giveth his beloved sleep verse 2 L let me let me check it out the bible says the lord giveth his beloved sleep so a good sleep is a blessing from the Lord. He said, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he giveth his beloved sleep. Because somebody comes from maybe an African culture, an Indian culture, uh, or Western culture, because there are witches and wizards here too, among us in, in, in Canada and, and in the United States in Great Britain, in every part of the world, the devil is there selling his goods. But for the fact that witches in your village are active at a certain hour, and maybe you woke up and you had to pray, or the Spirit of God woke you up and you prayed effectively, don't make it a doctrine for the body. You, When you focus on the Word of God, the Word of God, oh my goodness, you don't, you don't know. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So let me keep my questions, my responses straight. Demons are not more vicious in their operations at certain hours of day or night. Therefore, praying at specific hours of day or night is not more effective against devils. The scripture does not instruct any believer to pray against the devil or demons. We are rather to resist them in the name of Jesus. Using God's word that is resident in our hearts. That is where the crux of the issue is. When the word of God does not reside in your heart, then any garbage becomes, it looks appealing and it tastes good. All right. You got to know the truth so that you don't get deceived. Okay. So get the word to reside in your heart and keep living it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Praise God. Any kind of prayer done according to his unique rule and in faith is uh, that is based on God's word is going to work. It's going to be. It's going to work effectively. Okay, and we must be careful about what Paul calls the philosophies of men and traditions of men. All right, that are not of God. Ephesians chapter four. Remember, he says so that will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men, okay? Many people believe that witches and, and the powers of darkness that operate at certain hours of night 
or they are more vicious during those hours. And that is not true. The devil is a devil and is as dangerous at night as he is in the day. Okay? So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Bible say, having done all to stand, stand, having your loins girt about the truth. That's another thing that I, I think I forgot to uh, address too. There is a belief that you have to wake up every morning and put on the armor of God. And at night, you every morning you say, put on the breastplate of righteousness. And put, this is a, this is, this one came from our part of the world here in, in America. And it is false. It is false. So when you go to sleep, you mean the armors, the armor of God that you put on, you remove them and keep them by your bedside because you have to get up and put them back on. No, this is a misunderstanding of scriptures. You know, some sometimes that we follow people that seem to be popular or may have written, you know, be known in some way or maybe on TV or something, and we follow them and collect the garbage that they are spreading too. Do you know that the devil can use good people? If, if he gets a chance, so we got to be careful. Everything that you hear, you must check it with, check it with scriptures and the light of scriptures. Don't just take anything from anybody. Somebody may be very good, a very good teacher, very good uh, Bible minister, but there's a, a particular window where he may stagger and the devil may get access to that person to use that person or do something through that person that could mislead the rest of the body. We have to be careful. That's why we should love one another and pray for one another and support each other. All right? And when somebody makes an error, you don't go announcing the error. All right? You pray for that person. Okay. God's faithfulness is effective every hour of day. So do not Live in the fear that, oh, if I, I didn't get up yesterday to pray at so-so hour, so the devil is going to win. No, you are not in a battle. The, Jesus fought the, the battle, gave us the, if he fought for us, got the victory, gave it to us. That's why Paul said, for ye are more than the conqueror. Hallelujah. I say I will keep it short. Let me, I'm going to keep it short. Praying with the devil, your problem, your needs, anxiety, and worry. Whatever it may be on your mind is a waste of time. You don't go praying against the devil. You don't pray against the devil. Okay? You don't go there to God and say, and you have the devil. The devil is doing this, and that is what your mind is on. And you are talking to God. No, you don't. You are to resist the devil in the name of Jesus, and he must flee. Amen? You know, when Jesus made that statement, he didn't repeat. Oh, wait a minute. Well, the Spirit of God through the mouth of uh, uh, James, he did not repeat. Once is enough. Okay? We must only approach God with God in mind. We must approach God with God in mind. And we must be standing in his word or on his word, however you put it. Live in the word. Health may be in crisis. The devil is doing this or doing that. You don't go with those things in mind. Go with what God has said about the situation. That is the only thing you keep in your mind when you go to God. All right? You don't go there saying, uh, oh, Lord, uh, you know, you are carrying whatever the problem is on your mind. And you say, oh, Lord, please. My daughter, my daughter. No, you go there with the word. Something like this. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. For surely he has borne power. So you go meditate on that and take it to God and say, Lord, surely you bore power, including my daughters, including my son, including me, including whatever, whatever. You say, and if it's another situation, find God's word first and then Take it to God. When you carry uh, the devil on your mind or your needs in your mind or your fears or your anxieties, whatever it is that you carry in your mind, you just have idols on your mind and it's not going to work. Okay? You got to know God, his credibility, his faithfulness, his mercy, his love, his compassion, his power. That is what you keep in mind and his love for you. His 
faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. All that you know about the nature and the character of God, you must keep it in mind. That is what produces the kind of faith that God responds to. Amen? <laughs> Anything other than that, uh, the nature of God, the character of God, the word of God on your mind, when you are praying, you carry junk. You, I will, I will say, quit praying, go clean up, and then come back and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may pray for your loved ones. Uh, have keeping your carrying your loved ones in your in your heart, uh, your desires in your heart, but you are resting those desires and your loved ones on what God's word says. So you can say, okay, I have my daughter here, but this is what you said. I need uh, my mortgage paid here, and this is what. Father, you know I need a car, but you said you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. But you know, you 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 every desire that you have, make sure that it is hinged on the word of God, and don't focus on the need. Focus on God's credibility. All right, and you will see how it will come through for you. Okay, uh, number eleven. I'll be quick. I'm, I know time is get. This is getting long, uh, but please bear with me. Uh, the other one that number 11 has to do with prayer of protection. You, you do not need to pray for protection. You do not need to pray for protection. Even ordinary human beings, I mean fellow human beings, when our children are out, we do the best we can to, within our, our, our ability to make sure they are safe. God is not uh, is not a human being. All right. Praying for protection is a waste of time. Before you realize the danger, God already has promised never to leave you nor forsake you. You remember Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6? He said, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is he that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake you, or forsake thee. King James Version says forsake thee. Okay? So this is what the writer of Hebrew echoed in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. When he says, he, will never, he said, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. All right? So you do not need to, uh, to pray for protection. You thank God for protection. Thank God for provision. He says, your life, you are of greater value than, spar than the sparrows and birds and all the other creatures that God has, uh, has made. He said, if he cares for these, won't he care for you? Remember? Okay. And that is where we got this, uh, this beautiful song. If his eyes are on the sparrow, then I know he's watching over me. Okay. What you could do, uh, and in fact, when you are concerned about your protection, it's most likely that your faith is weak in that area. So spend time studying the promises of God that has to do with protection, provision, and all the so many promises so that you, you, you can, when you go to, you know, your mind, you are even free. You know, some people say, okay, we, we, we got we to gotta have a, what do you call it? We, I'm, I'm traveling, so I got to plead the blood of Jesus on the road, plead the blood of Jesus on the car. I bought a new house, so I got to go pray uh, for the house and plead the blood of Jesus on the house. That is nonsense. The blood of Jesus wasn't shed for those things. The scripture says that the blood was shed for the remission of sin. For the remission of sin. You gotta get my book uh, on that. The name uh, the, the the blood and the uh, and the uh, and the word of our testimony. You gotta get it. All right. So praise God. You don't pray for protection. All right. And now you, you also do not need to ask the angels for God to send his angels to come and surround and protect you. You know, some people pray, oh God, that you may send your angels to go. It sounds spiritual. It sounds good, but it is not scriptural. That is trash. It's, it doesn't work. You got to stay on the word. Take God at his word. If you believe that his word is true, then 
go to sleep or do whatever you need to do. You don't need to go, oh Lord, send your angels to come and, oh Lord, that you may stretch forth your mighty hand. You are God's mighty hand. There's a lot of junk in the body of Christ that we need to uh, remove. Psalm 34 verse 7, what does it say? It says the angel of the Lord then camps around or surrounds those who revere him to deliver the, the angels of the Lord. You don't need to call for angels to come do that for you. I know Hebrews 1.14 says, Are there no ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation? So the angels know who you are. They know if you're an heir of salvation. And they listen to God's instruction to minister for you. You just focus on doing your own. God's angels will focus on doing their own. I've been in places where, uh, you know, dangerous places. I remember some of the trips I made around Africa. Some of these places were really, really dangerous. I remember a trip I made to Liberia many years ago, and uh, it was the war was still very fresh. The Samuel Doe war was very uh, fresh. It was just as you know cooling off. So there was there was still, ah, oh my goodness, I I had such peace, such confidence in the presence of God that, I mean, it showed because of the comments other people made. All right, so keep that in mind. Those who honor the Lord hardly worry about protection because they are busy focusing on pleasing God so they don't even worry about protection, provision. No. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave that. I'll leave that. So if you invest time in studying God's word, your prayers will be more effective. It is the revelation of God's word that equips one for prayer. Okay? If you, it is the revelation of God's word that equips you for prayer. And prayer must be made with your whole attention wrapped in God and his word that you have understood and you are practicing. All right? So I'm going to uh, peg it here for today. And your questions and comments are welcome. And, uh, and I'm also looking forward to hearing from some of you who that I like I just said, please find scriptures to back this. If I have to go and give two, two verses, three, three verses for each of these points, uh, we will be here for much longer. But I know you know the word of God. So you go find those scriptures and then meditate on these scriptures, apply them, and let us uh, rise up and move forward from the level where we are. And please, do not stomach junk. Spew them out. The devil can use their false teachers. Okay? They are false teachers. You know, when we say, uh, if people come in and say, I'm a, I'm a prophet, I'm, a, I'm an apostle, and I'm this and that, and people listen to them, I, I am my calling. I'm an apostle, and I'm a prophet. I do not need to show that it's not the title that works. It is the work that I do with that grace that matters. Okay. So it's not, it's not, uh, it, you, when somebody's teaching and you know it's fake, this is, this is fake. Some people will just bring up things that are, you know, sensational so as to get attention and get a following and gullible, uh, Children of God will just swallow this junk hook, line, and sinker, and they are not able to discern. Uh, we got to learn to discern the truth. And the way to discern the truth is to study the original for yourself so that when the fake comes, you already know the texture, the taste, the flavor of the original so you won't be deceived. May the Lord bless you, and uh, I'll see you again. <laughs>